in the previous step, we came up with a solution that was not coding. Now we want to actually come up with the code version of the solution we came up with. So going back to our tablet here, we'll see that I pretty much just tidied up a little bit what we had written. And we have to now convert this into a coding solution. And we want to make sure that we clarify and communicate very clearly as we write our code, just to make sure that our instructor is following what we do, because we are getting judges on how we convert those logical steps into code. So here we are going to come up with a new function, which will be the representative of our actual solution. And you want to be clear about what this function name is. So I want to say find to sum. And this two sum is the two numbers that sum up to our target. And this is going to be a function that takes the nums array as well as a target value that we're looking for. What we're also going to do now is we need to instantiate those two pointers, P1 and P2. The thing is that we want to make sure that with P1, we check every possible combination for P1 first. This makes the most sense with something like a for loop, because a for loop is going to check every value in the array from left to right. And here we are going to use our for loop and inside of it instantiate P1, which equals zero, zero being the first index. As long as P1 is less than nums.length, and here dot length is going to give us five. So as long as P1 is less than five, which it will be because the last number or the last index in this array is four. And four is always going to be less than five. The moment that P1 is equal to five, well, our for loop is going to break. It's going to exit. But as long as it's less than nums.length, we are going to do P1++. Now that we have some pointer to P1, we need to calculate our number to find using this as the same way that we did up here inside of this function. We're just going to do it in a coding way now. And we want to save that value to some constant. And we're going to call it the number to find. This is going to be equal to target minus nums at p1. Now that we have the number to find, we're going to compare it against every value other than p1. And that we're going to do using P2. And it's going to be a second for loop. The only difference is that this for loop's initial value is not going to be 0. We want to make sure that P2 points to every number after P1. And the easiest way to do that is just to set P2 equal to P1 plus 1. P2 needs to be less than nums.length. And P2 is also going to increment. Now that we have P1 and P2 as well as our number to find, we have to check and see if the number at P2 is equal to this number to find. We can do that with an if block and say if nums at P2 is equal to number to find, then we want to return an array of P1 and P2. Remember, P1 and P2 are pointed to the indices, which means that once we actually have found the solution, we're just going to return an array of those two indices. Now we have to make sure to close our if braces. And then we say, what happens if nums at P2 does not equal number to find? Well, we actually don't want anything to happen. We just want our for loop to continue because we found that this P2 doesn't work. Let's just keep going. So we're just going to leave it as it is, and we're just going to close our for loop. And we've pretty much written all the code we need for P2. For P1, do we have to do anything else? Not really, because we're really just going to take P1, do our comparison, and if no number here matches, P1 is going to naturally progress and run the same loop of code again. So here, we're going to close this brace as well. And now this block right here, represents pretty much our solution exists. If there is an existing solution, this for loop block of code is going to catch everything. But what happens if there is no solution? P1 runs its course, and it finds that there is no solution here. 
Well, if that's the case, then we got to think back. When we spoke to our interviewer and we asked, if there's no solution, what do you want me to return? And in this case, maybe they just said, just return null. So once our block, our for block here is finished running, we're just going to return null. Because if our code ever hits this line right here, then we know for sure there's no solution. So solution doesn't exist, but we still want to make sure we return something. And this line will only run after our entire for loop has run. We've compared every pair of numbers possible. And that is our solution. We want to move on to our next step after we've coded our solution, which is just to double check for errors. We just want to make sure that all of our variable names align. We want to make sure that we've covered everything in this block of code. So we want to make sure that the nums here match all of the nums that we've written. And it's actually really hard without an IDE because if you have any spelling mistakes or if you forgot any of your braces, these are all actually things that the interviewer might see and they want you to catch them. It's an extra step of diligence they want to make sure that you have. So it's just important to do that. So scanning through it, I don't actually see any errors, but if you do, just make sure you fix them now. And once you scan through and it looks like the solution is pretty good, then we want to move on to our next step, which is we want to test our code with all of our test cases, which we will do in the next video.